Hello and welcome to API World 2021. It is my pleasure to introduce your next speaker. This is Ms. Lori Pisiccio. She's a full stack developer for Gravity IO. She'll now be joining on screen. Thank you. Uh, hi everyone, uh, thank you for attending this session. So uh, my name is Lori. I'm a full stack developer working at Gravity. Uh, Gravity is a company providing an open source API platform. And today we are going to talk about how using a design first approach might help you superpower your applications. So in this presentation, I will uh, talk about the rise of API first. I'll explain the difference between API first versus API design first. Uh, we'll see the benefits of the design first approach. And at the end of this session, I'll do a, a quick demo of what designing an API with a design first approach might look like. So in the 2020 state of the API survey, Postman questioned over 30,000 professionals of the API industry, uh, including developers, testers, executive, and others, about embracing the API first strategy. The result of this is oh, that over 60% of the respondents rated their adoption between five, uh, we, are, we are somewhat API first, to 10, we are fully API first. But even if the majority of the industry members are adopting this strategy, the term API first itself might have different uh, definitions. There is no commonly accepted defin de definition of this term. Uh, it can be used to refer to developing APIs um, before developing applications or integrations, or it can be used to refer to defining and designing APIs and schema before beginning development. So those uh, two definitions show that there are two strategies regarding API implementation. The first one is, let's say, the traditional one. It's the code first approach. So in this methodology, uh, when a project should start or a new feature should be implemented, uh, you start by tra tra traducting the business inputs into code. And then from the code, uh, the API documentation is generated, most of the time using tools like annotation in the code base to be able to automatically generate the API documentation. Now with the second strategy, in the design first approach, the API specification is derived and generated uh, directly from the design and not from the code. And the technical team will start writing code after design is, is uh, accepted. But let's zoom in a bit and walk through an example of how an API lifecycle would look like using the design first approach and why it's so powerful. So when using a, an API design first approach for any new business input or new feature, the project st stakeholder would iterate on a design to agree on the API specifications. Business representative would sit together with product owners, technical members of the team to define what the API would look, look like. And some team even involved at that stage of the process, their customers to validate the design. After a few iterations, uh, when the design is approved, we will be then able to, to provide the API documentation. And from there, there are a bunch of tools that allow to um, generate some mocks, some code stub, and some client SDK. So after a few iterations, when the design is approved, we have all those materials ready. We are ready to start right away and in parallel uh, at the same time, the front-end development, thanks to the mock, we know what the data we are going to display will look like. We also have the client SDK that can uh, speed up the development of the front-end application. At the same time, the backend can team can start working on the server implementation of those API, thanks to the code steps that were generated. But at the same time, also the testing can be started because thanks to the mocks, we know what data we should expect. So we are able to write some automated tests right away at the beginning of the project. 
So sounds pretty interesting. I don't know what your opinion, maybe we'll share at the end. Now let's point out all the benefits of this methodology. So when using a, a design first approach, the first benefits that we can uh, notice is that we have an improved communication with all the project stakeholders from business members to technical members, or even as I mentioned before, the customers. Uh, and in order to get a rapid feedback loop and to be able to iterate quickly over the API definition. So by shortening the feedback loop and making the work more visible, the teams are able to mitigate the risks and somehow reduce the cost. I mean, if you think about it, it's like the benefits of the agile methodology to compare to the V cycle development, but extend it to the design phase. Another advantage of this approach is that the defined API will be more compliant to the client needs. Um, in sometimes when developing API, we stick to development constraints, like for instance, data storage or authentication, so permissions. And by doing the design first, then we are sure that the API we are designing is serving the product needs. And by having an API that sticks more to the product needs, you improve the developer experience being your internal developers because they have a more precise idea of what they need to, um, to put together. But also in case if your API are consumed directly by your customers, then it improves the developer experience for your customers only. And then it starts becoming very interesting. Oops, sorry. Um, as we've seen in the pre previous slide with the life cycle, the um, design first approach also helps uh, drive parallel development because as we've seen with this approach, we are teams are able to start front end, back end and automating testing uh, coding at the same time. And last but not least, designing API prior to development can help enforce governance and security by defining some global settings and best, best practices, like for instance, naming conventions or case configuration. We can also think of defining default responses depending on the status code or security, security headers or authentication required on APIs. So there are some uh, tools that you can use on API definitions, just like linters you apply on your source code. And those tools might uh, check that your API complies to some quality rules. So as we can see, there are big benefits out of using a design first approach when building APIs. But how can we define API first? There are a bunch of formats that you can use to define an API. For instance, the most common one would be the Open API Specifications format, the Swagger format. Uh, you can also define API with the RAML language, uh, REST API modeling language. Um, more recently, you can also define your API with the Async API format for your event-driven application. But as you see from those screenshots, in any case, the vast majority of the tools available are not very business friendly uh, because designing API would require a minimum degree of technical knowledge, like at least being able to read and write some YAML or JSON, which might not be so easy for non-technical users. And also, as we mentioned before, if we want to apply some quality rules with the linters on your APIs. This again might be um, straightforward for a developer, but not so easy for non-technical users. There are also some options avail available for non -so not so technical users to work with uh, developers to build your API with a design first approach. At Gravity, we are working on an API designer tool, which is based on a visual mind map representation of the API, uh, enabling to collaborate with any stakeholders, uh, even non-technical users. So this tool will unlock the benefits of the design first approach, uh, like for instance, improving the developer experience, communication with the product stakeholders, the rapid feedback loop, 
and this all of those benefits can be uh, retrieved with a tool which is very visual and uh, and user friendly so i will try to show this tool uh, in the demo i pray the demo got to be with me today and not to have the traditional demo effect uh, so let's jump into our um, copy tool, which includes the API designer functionality. From here, I will create a new TV show API. I will add a fancy description for this API. And when I create my API, I'm uh, landing into this visual mind map edition tool. So I can uh, enable some operations on the API. I can uh, change the attributes of my API. So I will keep the ID attributes. I can give some examples right here. So let's use this one for the ID. The TV show would have a title. Uh, I will use for example, the game. A TV show can have a um, channel where it is broadcasted for, for, for script game, it would be Netflix. Uh, and as you can see here from the right, uh, the Swagger uh, definition is, is updated in real time as I update my model. So uh, I've selected a bunch of uh, operations on, on this API. I have my um, different attributes with the different examples I set in, in the left panel. I will not go through all the options right now because I have to keep this demo short, but uh, feel free to reach out to us at, after this presentation if you want to know more. So I will uh, finish my uh, model. So TV shows would have some, oops, sorry, some seasons. I will make these seasons a subpath of the TV show. I will enable also some operations. So a season would have an ID, a number, for instance, this one would have the number format, and I will put one as an example. And each season can have a list of episodes, which also might be a setup here. Episodes might have also an ID. I will also add a number. I will keep this one as a string because I would like them to have that kind of format, for instance. And an episode might have a title. Let's say Green Light for the first episode of the Screen Day TV show. So yeah, you got it. Uh, this tool enables you to build your uh, API definition and to generate a Swagger uh, description. So as soon as you've made all the iterations with all the project stakeholders and you are happy with this, this definition, you can either download it from here, so you would get, get the corresponding JSON, JSON file with the Swagger format, or you can deploy it directly to our API management uh, system. So I will push it from here. This is deployed to my API management system. I can log in from here and get to my API management console. So this API management is the tool used to for the API publisher to manage its APIs. So here I have the list of my APIs. I will look at the TV shows API. So you see that uh, by using the deploy button, I was able to deploy an API on this API management system. I have uh, some documentation that is automatically pushed with my API. So this is the model that we just uh, filled before. And something at Gravity will also have a policy designer that can help us to uh, had add some policies on our APIs. And for this one, obviously we have no implementation right now. So what we want is to automatically act activate a mock policy that will enable my customers to call the API. So from here I have the, this is the URL of the API gateway. So I will append the TV show path 
And from here, I'm able right away to get the results of my API based on the examples and the, and the mock values that I provided in my API documentation. So this is great. Um, we can have an API automatically published and, and providing the result that we want to expose. But this might we might not want to expose this API management system to our uh, customers if they are API consumers, if they are external customers. In that case, at Gravity, we also have a, an API portal, which is dedicated to API consumers. And so for these API consumers, they will be able to browse from the catalog API, find our TV shows API, discover the documentation from for this API, and get all the inf information to be able to consume this API. So this is it for the demo. Um, Thank you very much for your attention. I see that a few questions popped up in the in the um, in the chat. So maybe we have a bit of time to answer to those questions.